This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to ThinkTech Hawaii. I'm Glenn Martinez of Olamana Gardens, and this is Natalie Cash, our farm manager. Say hello. Hello, everybody. Yeah. She's wearing Merry her Christmas, Christmas colors That's today. Right. It's yeah. All yeah. Everything but a ribbon in the hair today. Oh, got it. We're doing really good. Well, we're having a great season coming up. Um, wanted to share with you uh, that our friends down in the Big Island, uh, we got some slides we're going to show you later of uh, how they're coming along with their course. Today's YWAM. the last day, YWAM, and the YWAMers down in Kailua Kona. And so they had nine students take the course. It's nine days long, yeah. and that. And uh, today's their final day doing presentations. But they've been sending us pictures through the week and uh, teaching uh, their students how to build my, uh, the, what we call hands-on training, hot training. And uh, so and it's M-A-D, MAD. So we call it MAD HOT. And then the MAD stands for make a difference. Yes. So the big question to all these students is, did it make a difference spending this nine days doing what they're doing, okay? Yep. And, uh, and the standard response they get is they learn more in that nine days than they did in the whole semester coming up, okay? Because they did all the academics, so they know why it should work, but they've never seen it work. So it's kind of interesting. And talking about education is uh, Dr. Benny Ron used to be with the vice chancellor's office here at University of Hawaii. And uh, Natalie and I have worked with him quite a bit. Where have we gone, Natalie, with De oh Benny Ron? Oh, my gosh. We've been to the Philippines several times. America, Samoa, Western yep. Samoa. Yep. We've been to um, different parts of the mainland mm -hmm. for conferences and uh, mm -hmm. Hawaiian Islands too. Right. So in, in many Hawaii. ways, Dr. Benny Ron really put us on the map. Yes. You know? So we Bless got to put more heart. stars on the map where we've been, what we do. Yeah. And so we do, we lecture for him. And Natalie and I are uh, only two people on the staffs so of 18 people for the ATOL program, which what is that? Aquaculture training online learning there you go you learned that very well <laughs> atoll okay atoll. atoll training and so atoll training is online done it was funded by noah and yeah. noah did it because they have a responsibility to education to the pacific islands and the trust territory mm -hmm. so does university of hawaii so they spent some sizable money i mean hundreds of thousands of dollars to do this online course and Natalie and I were invited to participate, and yes. we did about 18 films for them. We got yes. paid to do it. It was a good gag. And then they showed it online. Well, we're in our fourth year, and they're still showing. And yeah. now with the University of Texas and other learning institutions. And so it's online, so you can go up and see it. So you we're going to show you the introduction that Natalie and I made for this course. It's a short yeah. little 15, 20 minute film. Yeah. And so we're gonna roll that and then I'll, I'll answer some questions right after that. So if we go ahead and show that, the ATOL introduction. I'm here to have a conversation with you about aquaponics. This is not a lecture series. This is more of a show and tell and it's hands on, my hand, and hopefully at your end, your hand, for you to learn the basics of aquaponics. Our intention is to teach you where it came from, who started it, how much progress you've made, who are the leaders in this thing, what systems work, and then to show you some possibilities of what you can do. We'll start off with an aquarium in a house and then having a garden outside, and we'll go from there. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this journey. Aquaponics is a fine art of using the fish waste water to fertilize the plants, letting the plants clean up the water and recirculating it back to the fish tank nice and clean. This is a basic aquarium setup. 55 gallons, all you have to have is anywhere from six to 10 fish in it and you've got what you need to do your garden. Your garden can be right outside there on the tables out in the sunlight. One of the things I really like is I can come from inside the studio or inside my townhouse or my condo, step out on the lanai, and here's my little cinder bed with my aquarium fish water coming into it. It's going to fill up to here, hit this level, going to go down. That's going to set up a siphon. The water's going to go past, and it's going to fertigate all my plants. Fertigate, fertilized irrigation. So like hydroponic, but it's organic. Big difference. And you can certainly tell it in the taste. Okay. I think one of the neatest things in aquaponics is something called barrel ponics, or aquaponics in a barrel. 
A fellow named Travis Huey came up with this in about 2005. He gifted it to the world. If you're just making it for yourself, he's happy to share his plans with you for free up on the internet. Basically, he has a 55 gallon drum on the bottom. That is your fish in there. That's your aquarium. He pumps the water up here to the top, comes up to the top, running all the time. Up here, you have your cinder bed or your biofilter, and you have a siphon. This is kind of a neat thing. This is the Australian bell siphon. And the water goes up, flushes, goes down. We're going to teach you all about that. That goes in there. The water is going to fill up to about this level. Then it's going to flush. It's going to come out the bottom, and it's going to come through. And what you're going to see is things grow hydroponically without any soil. And you also see that we have cinder beds here, two 25-gallon cinder beds growing rooted crops, or we can go with the leafy lettuce, our choice. But it's something anybody can do if you've got access to a couple of barrels. You'll enjoy this. This is kind of a cute little system we designed right here at Olamana Garden. It consists of three trays set up on top of a luau table. Table 30 by 60, 30 inches by 6 feet long. Three little trays from Home Depot filled full of cinder. The water's flowing up here constantly. Where does the water come from? It comes from the fish tank. Down here we have a 110 gallon fish tank. Fish are swimming around in it. Water gets pumped up there. The water goes through there. This is your siphon. When the water fills up here, hits this level, overflows, comes down, and then we have what? Our aquaponic bed, right? With all the plants growing like that. So, come through here. The last one, is our Azola. This is where we grow our own fish food, and I can feed my fish by doing that. Doesn't get much simpler than that, folks, and it really works. If you're talking aquaponics and you're talking sustainability, well, you got to get rid of the food. We mentioned that. The other thing is energy. Solar really plays in. This is a small little system that you can put together for a couple of hundred dollars. And the solar into here is 80 watts. We'll run one of these systems. Every now and then we have somebody say, well, you know, I just don't want a whole bunch of ugly black plastic tanks in my backyard. Well, it doesn't have to be that way. You can have all the nature you want. And you can have it with that as scenic as possible. So this can be your fish pond. This pond is five feet deep. That brings up a healthy bounty of fish for us every year. In this course, we're going to show you, you're not stuck with doing an aquarium or a plastic tank. You can be in a very natural pond setting. You can be grazing beautiful koi fish. We've got some guys in here two and a half, three feet long. We don't eat these guys, totally ornamental. But you know what? My plants don't care. So we're going to show you many different ways to do this. Now you saw the fish in the aquarium. You see a fish in a tank. But the best way to actually see a fish is in your landing net. These are some of our nice guys here. I'd like to show you here is how we get dinner. This is our dinner. We can catch them. You can walk over here at any time. And just come up with a whole pot full of them. So these are great tasting guys. And we'll show you how to catch them. We'll show you how to raise them. And the best part, we're going to show you how to cook them. So I'll tell you what, these little beauties just cook up very well. This is a 1,200 gallon tank. What we want to show you is every time we move water, then we aerate it. We're going to show you several different methods. Now this tank is 1,200 gallons, and we have over 1,000 fish. And it's not too hard to come up with a net full of them. Okay, this is a tea maker. We're going to show you how we don't just limit ourselves to the fish food, but we actually make tea in these 55 gallons. We make it every day. And it's a simple thing. We're going to show you how to take a stack of worm castings, put it in the bucket, pop it around here, run it for 24 hours, and when you top off your system, we're going to teach you how to use worm tea. It's a miracle stuff. This is the kind of spray action we get out of the water coming down the hill, dumping into our siphon tank. I think you'll be quite surprised at how much aeration. We keep our air up at 7 to 7.2 parts per million by this method. 
we run very little pressurized air in our system. This is the clear water in the bottom of our sump tank. And from this, you can see just how clear the water is. When we start talking about sustainability in aquaponics, how sustainable can you be if you have to go to the store and buy your fish food? So we're going to show you how to raise azolla and other crops like duckweed so you grow your own food to feed it. Not only do we feed our fish this in aquaponics, we put it here on the farm, our goats, our chickens, our pigs. We're going to show you duckweed. We're going to show you many different ways of doing it, of growing your own food. Some of the things we're going to share with you is that we grow from everything from sweet potato, a little ornamental flowers, keeps the bugs confused. But the most important thing is we in our beds is we raise worms. Here are my worms. These are Indian blue worms. We're going to show you how to grow them and they keep everything smelling sweet. There's a rumor in aquaponics that about the only thing you can grow is lettuce. But we're here to tell you, you can grow yourself a forest of kalo. This stuff is fantastic, extremely nutritious, and a favorite around the Pacific Islands. You always want to think about your herbs. You get your herbs, you get your chives, it's really nice. We're going to go over and show you some mint right after this. If you're into the cooking arts, aquaponics offers you a special treat. You can grow so many of your herbs. One of my favorites here is I like a cool drink in the summertime. So I grow four different kinds of mint in one 4x4 foot garden. I've got spearmint, peppermint, orange mint, and my all-time favorite, chocolate mint. Life is good. Sweet potatoes are all-time favorite all over the world. We grow them not only just for the potato, but also for the leaves. We use it in many, many dishes. We're particularly proud of this, tapioca. This is a staple crop when you go down to Tonga and Fiji and the Pacific Islands. Big starch eating plant. You eat the roots of it. This plant, towering over five, six foot tall, is only five months old and it's already bearing seeds. This is some kale. Stuff grows big and strong in here. What we're most proud of in our ebb and flow system and using cinder beds to filter the fish water, it gives us a special treat. We get to grow things like asparagus. It takes two years to get your first crop, but after that, you go eight to 10 years. This is some great eating. Water hyacinths just add a little beauty to any water garden. You can't eat them, but they sure clean up the water and they add a little beauty to the garden. Well, if you're going to be in Hawaii, one thing you got to do is grow a little bit of pineapple. It's a two-year crop, folks, but this pineapple is only about four and a half, maybe five months old. And it'll be eaten here maybe in another month. It's doing all right. This is chayote squash. The real particularly interesting thing on this is all of this is from one vine, just one plant. Right now we got about a count of 58 fruit up here. Now very often you have people bragging about mine is bigger than yours or mine grows faster. Well I want to put a claim out that ours is growing more fertile. This is sprouting right on the vine. And you can see many more in the background doing very similar. I thought you might get a kick out of this. White ginger. We're multimedia. You got sound, you can hear me, you got visual, but you know what? You can't smell it, and it is beautiful. Here we teach brand new technology. It's only 2,000 years old, pretty much developed by the Romans. And we just unearthed some ancient scribe scrolls, and we found out that if you take two inch by two inch by two inch block, and you stamp it out, they're soil blockers you buy on the internet. You can learn to stamp these out, and what do you do? You take this little block, and it's sitting here in your hand like this. When it sprouts up, the roots will not jump out into the air. We take this, and we simply put it inside of a net pot. The net pot then, once this is a little bit grown, 
and say about this size, now it's ready to go out in the field. The roots are just wanting to start to come out. We take this and we go drop it inside one of our float beds and then, wow, the roots are going to shoot out and this will be harvested in about two weeks from this stage right here. Anybody who studies aquaculture or aquaponics is sooner or later have to have to come to grips with chemistry. It's not too bad. You learn to do pH tests, you learn to do nitrate tests, and they're all very similar. You have an instruction book that tells you how much chemicals to put in a little test tube, put a sample of water. You learn to put it in here, you learn to read the chart, and to tell good from bad. Basic stuff, but you need to know it. So we're not going to drown in it, but we're going to certainly cover the basics. The other one, aquaculture and aquaponics, is a DO meter. That's dissolved oxygen. And you're going to learn what's good and when you're getting in trouble. Without this little magic wand, it's just a guessing game, folks. This we don't live it without. What I'd like to share with you and teach you in this course is how to build your own siphon. This is a practice one. It's a five-gallon bucket. We're going to have you go get a bucket, drill a hole in it. You're going to get some PVC pipe, and you're going to make it up like this. And you're going to discover the magic how this buck, bucket can control a larger garden over on the side and allow you to drain that garden all the way to the bottom. The secret here is the water will be coming in from the bottom. When it fills up to here, it hits this point, it will overflow and come out three to four times faster than it's coming in. It will keep coming out until this pipe here is an airflow. This is the air release. And when the water gets to the bottom of that pipe, then it will break the siphon, you'll hear a gurgle, the water will stop coming out of here, and it will continue filling back up. So this will take 10 minutes to fill up, and then it'll go down in two minutes, controlling a garden much larger than this bucket. The second siphon we're gonna show you is the Australian Bell Siphon. This is neat, it could be used in a bucket. You would remove all this white piping. You'd have one pipe coming up on the inside about that tall. This would sit over the top of that pipe. When the water came up in this bucket and overflowed into the stand pipe, it would set up a suction. And it would suck out the air on the top third or half of this siphon. When it sucks out the air, that will trigger a siphon. It will then flush like flushing a toilet. The water will rush out. When it rushes out, it'll rush out until it gets down to here, and this is your air brake. This tube goes all the way up to the center inside here. And so we're going to teach you this. We're going to give you a little diagram of it. We're going to have you go build it, and you have you practice on a little five-gallon bucket. Once you get this down, you're set. I believe the best way to learn aquaponics is to build yourself a small system and get started. But it's kind of a neat thing if you have an idea of where you might end up. So what I want to show you now is some pictures that I've taken around the, the Big Island and on Oahu here in Hawaii of different systems to give you a little concept of what you might want to do. Okay? And I'm going to give you some links. And in this course, we're going to send you to people like Will Allen at Growing Power and over to the Virgin Island University with Dr. Ricosi. We want to show you what the other people are doing. So anyway, hold on and we'll give you a little tour around the islands. We'll start a little tour off at uh, David Stark's place up in Waimea. He's taken a suburban backyard and made it into a food forest. He's just doing great with it. He's also been very innovative in his methods of doing vacuum seed boxes, the way to drill out your float beds. Just a genius. And this is a simple system anybody could build. It's wonderful. This is a YB's place. This is a, uh, started off as being Tim Man plan from Friendly Aquaponics. Uh, a lot of it is very similar. It's taken right off the plants and then he's modified things. Welcome to Deborah and Rick's Fun Ponics. This is a home in Lanikipe up on the side of a hill. Difficult piece of property and they've done something wonderful. They've cantilevered off their aquaponics system and have it cascading down the side of the mountain. This is Alexis and Chris Smith of Coast View Aquaponics overlooking the Kona Airport. This is Dragon Eyes Ventures. This is just a wonderful place. I call it a little Disneyland. 
they milled all the wood that you see here and they built everything up. The bottom foot is cinder of the bottom. Then they put in a food grade lining and then they put in the plywood on the top, drilled the holes. It's just fantastic. Great production out of it. Wonderful Puna Big Island environment. You get down there. This is their center beds. It's a flushing system. It's just great. You got to go see it if you can go on the Big Island. Well, what we tried to show you in this little brief introduction is some of the things we're going to cover in this course. You're going to have a lot of diagrams. You're going to have a lot of scientific information. We're going to have a little bit of chemistry. But we want to kind of keep it light. We want to encourage you to get out there and get it going. But the most important thing is for you to have a basic understanding of the basic principles on it. Doing the siphons, the ebb and the flow, uh, Dr. Ricosi's method at Virgin Island Institute of doing solid removal. These things, and once you know them, you have this little introductory. And then I want to encourage you to go out and visit any aquaponic farms that are in your area. You'll learn so much by talking to the very people. If you can't get out and visit them, I'm going to encourage you to Google them. Get up there and Google aquaponics, put in the name of your state, your country, and find out what's going on around you. Email these people. You'll be quite surprised at how much they're willing to share. Well, anyway, folks, this is your introduction. Now we're going to get down to business in the course. Thank you for listening. There you go. Okay, dokie. How did you like that? That's Fantastic. awesome. So one thing we wanted to share with you here for the tool of the week mm -hmm. is this electrical tool. This one happens to be a Klein brand, but they all kind of brands on them. What's really neat about something like this is that it tells me where the electricity is on. We work around a lot of water, a lot of electricity. Yep. So this little device, if I put it here, you hear that? Okay. It'll not only work on a cord, but it'll tell me which side. This side is dead, that side is the live side, mm -hmm. so that I cut the right side of the cord after I turn off the power, yes. right? Yes. So you always test it on a known live circuit, and then you pull it off. And uh, But this is really neat. You can carry it in your pocket. It's so easy to do. They're inexpensive. I mean, I think we're talking under $20, you know, mm -hmm. different brands. Some hardware stores have them, mm -hmm. you know, in that, or electronics store, like Industrial Electronics here in Honolulu. They carry a line of these different brands, or, you know, and that, but all very similar. But this, to me, is a lifesaver. When we're working around uh, pumps, mm -hmm. I can put this next to the pump. And if, on the outside of the pump, if it goes, did it, did it, did like if I turn it back on here, if it goes like this, I don't touch the pump. You're going to get shocked, okay? And we're doing submersible pumps where you set them in the water. If you ever see oil on top of the water, turn the power off, get the pump out of there. That oil is inside the pump to keep it insulated. Mm -hmm. And when they go bad, when they crack in that, mm -hmm. and of course the worst thing I hate to see is somebody pick up a pump oh, yeah. by the electrical cord. They do it, that too. Yeah, they do. <laughs> You always pick it up by the hose, yeah. yeah. But fantastic. Well, we want to share a few slides with you of yeah. what's going on down in Kailua Kona. Why, well. You know? Yeah. So here we go. Now this is the course that they're teaching down in uh, Kailua Kona. They had nine students. This is Dr. Parks. He is a fantastic guy. He's a retired child doctor, what do you call it, pediatrician. And he is now a big advocate of the South Korean natural farming yeah. with Master Cho and works as interpreter. And these are my uh, my teacher that I taught down there. Uh, I teach teachers. Yeah, and, the tall uh, fella in the The tall fellow. Yeah. And uh, that's Terry. their students. And then that's his wife, Cindy, right in the background. Mm -hmm. And uh, the stand. And these are their different students. And notice they're filming it. So whatever they're doing so they can expand it, like we shot that little film for you, is so much easier to be able to share. So here they're teaching people how to make the bucket siphons, like you saw in my little intro film, yes. how to drill them out, how to use the whole saw. It's called hot, yeah. hands-on hands -on training. Hands-on training. So you notice everybody's wearing safety glasses and they're wearing earmuffs and that. So we try to teach them safely too, not yes. just jungle rules, right? Yeah. And hey, is that young man proud or what? Huh? Mm -hmm. That's a good smile. He That's made what you a like Del to see. Siphon. So we have students from 18 to 70 years old, all yes. over the map. You know, yes. and that. And uh, 
So you can get information about YWAM. Just go up on the internet, YWAM Kailua Kona. There you go. They teach them the chemistry, how to use the water test kits mm -hmm. in that. And these are the folks, Natalie, I went down and volunteered 10 days with them to teach them, to help them get ready to teach this course. And they are doing a bang up job. The yes. students are giving rave reports on what they're learning. And this is uh, Terry Vernon. Boss. Uh, huh? Vernon. 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 Yes. And Vernon was the boss, became a student. How's that? Huh? Yes, he did. Yeah. You know, it's hard. Notice the block of wood. They drilled it out so the test tubes don't That's fall smart. over. Huh? It's a practical thing. Very, very practical. But they did all the basics, how to level all their tanks and that. That's they important. They teach them to build a two-by-four box, throw it on the ground, put the gravel in there, level the gravel, everything else will be okay. Yes. Uh, and that's something I learned from Murray Hallam. So you see the young lady there with a hacksaw? She's taking an IBC or what we call yeah. a tote, mm -hmm. how to take it out, cut it, cut it one-third off, and flip it over. The bottom half yep. will be a fish tank, yes. and the top half will be the cinder bin. Yes. A fellow in the Philippines did this, and we coached him on it, and he won their equivalent of the uh, Nobel Peace Prize yeah. in the Philippines. He got $175,000 American. He sure did. Huh? He was happy really guy. happy about huh? that one. Yeah, yeah. And he that, used an IBC tote. To used the IBC tote and flipped it over. Do his aquaponics project. Yep. And so it's really nice when you can help people with something like it. So here's the bottom of the IBC tote cut off. And see the top half is set up there on the board. And look at the smiles on those students, huh? Yeah, those are some happy guys. So they got that all built, and they sent me pictures of it. It's, they're already, they got fish in it, mm -hmm. and they're going for broke. I mean, they're, they're yep. doing great. Uh, this is their big 5,000-gallon fish tank. So this is not just a little backyard gardening, yeah. but they're taught how to go to Nepal or somewhere and build a garden to feed a village in yeah. that. And they're bringing those fish up. Those are about two and a half to three pound tilapia yeah. in there. Really nice. So that will fish. feed a couple, you know. And look at the lettuce. Now, all this food goes to the YWAM cafeteria. Yes. And that's what we try to encourage is putting aquaponics in a learning institution where you have somebody to eat all the food. And now the people that go to Nepal, right down the road, a fellow named Wes loaned them some property and they built a test system from scratch. You had to clear the land, build that frame, put all the beds on it, and yeah. plant it out. Totally turnkey. When they're all done, in January, they're heading off to Nepal. So here's your group of students and teachers. Uh, just a really healthy thing. When we were there, we fed us lunch every day. We ate out of the garden. Mm -hmm. I would offer to take Natalie down the road to a restaurant. She said she'd rather have a salad right yeah. from their own garden. Yeah. So yeah. good fun. Well, we hope you all got something out of this. If you'd like more information on the Aquaculture Hub program, go up on the internet, aquaculturehub.org. And you'll see Benny Ronnie's doing great stuff. And that. Uh, well, we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for being, coming and watching Think Tech Hawaii. And thank you, Natty, for being here. Aloha.